What if I told you that there is an AI tool that just released yesterday that is here to revolutionize the way that you do work in your personal life, your business, or basically anything that has to do with online interaction? You see this tool, Runner Age, that was released yesterday by the Age company is here to change the way that you work. They allow you to actually build automations with the website and tools that you already use, like Google Sheets, Google Notes, Notion, Zapier, among others. And it can actually take steps on your behalf. Today, I will teach you how to use Runner Age, and we will go over five different use cases that I'm using it for on my own personal life and my business. And perhaps I can show you a few tips and tricks that I have learned along the way. With that being said, let's jump in. I want to go go and show you exactly how you can use Runner Age. All right, this is Runner Age, and as a Runner Age, you can do one of two things. Number one, you can go to the link down below and you can click there. It's not an affiliate link or anything like that, but basically you can either go there or you can go to runner.agecompany.ai and that will lead you to the same page that you're seeing here on your screen. Now, right now, as you can see, Runner Age is, has a similar user interface as ChatGPT, Gemini, and others, where you can type exactly what you want to do, and it actually goes and do it. I will guide you step-by-step step on what you need to know. So the first thing that I did personally is I went to connections because I wanted to make sure that I get all the tools and the software connected for it to be able to use. So I connected Notion, I connected my Google account and uh, my Slack account. I'm going to connect my Sapir account a little bit later. That will be a tutorial that I will release a little bit later on today or perhaps tomorrow to show you how to connect the Sapir account because it's a little bit different than all the other ones for your regular Google account. All you have to do is toggle the button and it gives you this pop-up with a consent. You consent, you connect your Google account, and you click on the Google account that you want to connect. You select the permissions that you want to give. And in this case, I'm giving all permissions and that's it, it's being connected. Second thing that I want to show you is the files. And these files are files that the runner age will use as a reference when it's running the different tasks that you provide or that you ask to do. I uploaded some files and it seems like it actually got some of the contents out of those files, but it's been out only for a day now. So I cannot tell you that for sure it, it works seamlessly, but given that this is a brand new project that just released, you might want to keep in mind that there will be some issues at the beginning as it improves. Then for the discover, these are some templates of different automations that have been created either by the company or by some of the early adopters. And you can replace some of these same templates and just have runner age run them for you. So we're going to run some of the ideas that I have for automation. And then we will go a little bit more in depth into how you can actually accomplish some of the things to automate your business purposes. Now, the first thing that I want to do is go on product hunt and get the top 10 products of today. And the reason why I do this is because every day I go on product hunt and figure out what has launched and what are some of the best products. So I can bring you the best product ideas and the best products available in the AI world and showcase them to you. So. I have created a quick prompt and basically I'm just giving instructions just like I would give to a virtual assistant or an assistant or any other employee in my company. I wanted to go on product hunt and I want to scrape the top 10 products of today. There's certain information that I want. So the product name, the description, the launch URL and the category. So basically I can go through it and I can take a look and see exactly what's launched and what might be worth showcasing in this channel. Now, keep in mind that I'm keeping this relatively simple. We're starting from the bottom 
And the reason why is because I want to show you how powerful this is. I'm not sending the data to another service. I'm just asking to give it back to me and it would provide it in the form of a PDF. So we're going to hit the play button. And basically what's going to happen now is I starting to think and putting together the plan for exactly how it's going to accomplish this follow following that is going to actually go and open a browser to start scraping the data. And lastly, it's going to put all the data together in a PDF um, file that I can later on download and use for whatever it is that I want to use. As you can see, it's browsing the products right now. And it looked like it's okay. So it has gotten all the information that I need. And here is the report. So I'm going to open this in the library so we can take a look at it. And it actually got me the information that I need. Here's the top 10. Let's go product hunt and Arbato, Test Hut, Idea Browser, Jot for Agent, Idea Browser. It looked like we actually got the top 10 here. And this is perfect for what I want. Let's see if the link is actually working and it is. So it did what I asked it to do. Now let's take a step folder into the second use case. And now with that out of the way, my next step would be to provide a little bit more complex requests. So now I wanted to go to Crunchbase and actually find some of the companies that have been funded this week in the United States, because those companies probably have a budget for me to provide my services. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste my prompt and I'm going to ask to go Crunchbase and find those companies added to a sheet on my Google sheet. And that way I can save them for the future so I can reach out to them. And I can do many things definitely outside of this video. So we're going to send this, we're going to allow it to do that. But while it's doing that, what I want to do is I'm going to let it think for a moment. I'm going to go here and I want to talk to you about some other features that you probably want to know about as you are preparing for use runner H. Number one, of course, we have been writing the prompt in the input field nothing changes. That's the same as ChatGPT and other AI tools. You can upload files again, just like any other AI tool. You can upload files here and ask it to summarize or use it as contest for whatever it is that you're asking it to do. Now, what makes this different is that you have a way to control how much you want to be in the loop. It can be highly involved where it's asking you questions every time it gets stuck, or it can be moderately involved where, you know, it's making some decisions on its own, or it can be fully automated where you are out of the loop. It goes and do exactly what you want to do. Different tasks will require different level of involvement. If you're comfortable with the task that you're providing, with it being fully automated, go for it. That way you don't have to go back and provide feedback or answer questions. But if you're concerned about certain things that it's doing, like sending emails and stuff like that, you probably want to be highly involved or at least moderately involved. The next thing is that right now, this is a free plan. So you are not actually paying for it, but they're only giving you 10 free automations to run just for you to test. So just keep that in mind, but we're going to go back to our original and as you can see, it's browsing a uh, crunch base and it has created the Google sheet a little bit concerned because it looked like it's running into the captcha verification. We will see here in a moment, whether or not it's actually being able to get past that and whether or not we got the data, I'm going to put it there because I want this to be relatively straightforward review of what it can and cannot do. See where we at. Let's go to Google Sheets. All right, you haven't created our Google Sheet. Actually, it has access to a different account. All right, 
U.S. fund startups. Okay, so I actually got the data that we requested. This is not bad at all. Some formatting issues here and there, small, but not bad. All these are AI companies that have gotten funded on this week. It looked like it's already done. Let's lower this. And as you can see, it has provided all the, the last feedback and giving you the link for the Google Sheet for you to see it. Pretty good. Now, with this done, let's go to number three and let's see how you can go one step further. Now, for my next use case, I'm going to take data that was provided by Runner H in the last step. I'm going to folder get more information. So I'm going to type in here my prompt. And basically I had provided the Google Sheet link, the URL, and I'm going to ask Runner H to go to that Google Sheet and find the company website URL for each of the companies and add it as a new column. Let's see how it does that. So we're sending that prompt right now. Basically, all it has to do is go find the URL and add it as a new column. Relatively simple. I have noticed that sometimes it run into issues and I have to redo it. But for the most part, it seems to work correctly. It looks like right now it's searching through the Google Sheet and is actually getting the data that we need. And he has found the data. Let's lower this really quick as you are working through it. If you want to see what it's doing, you can lower it using this button. And if you need to bring it back up, you can click the button and it comes back up. So right now it's browsing. It has found the Anthropic website, the Epirus, the Shield AI, and the Peregrine. It's working through everything, every single company. I found the Calio Therapeutics, 4C Medical Technologies, an official website. We're going to allow it to finish and then we're going to go back to Google Sheet and we're going to take a look and see whether or not it found everything that we needed to find. Now, ideally, I would have prompt runner age to do all of these in one prompt and get everything done. But I realized that number one, I want to take you from zero to give you a good idea of how far you can take runner age. That's number one. Number two, I ran into some issues, so it was hit or miss. So I didn't want it to actually fail halfway through the video and give you a bad impression because this is a really powerful software. It's just right now is relatively new, so it will run into issues. Here are the links. Actually, I'm more interested. Okay, so he added the links. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to actually get the next prompt rather than pausing this video. And I'm going to copy this, come back here. And we're going to start a new run. Yeah, it will help. So let me bring this up really quick. It's Visit a website for each day. List it. Actually, get a summary of what each of the This she does add the summary as a new column. So we're going to take a step folder. I want Ned to tell me what each company does because there are some companies there that I don't necessarily know. I, I have never heard of. So I wanted to give me a better idea of what it is. Again, this is something that ideally would have been done in one prompt. We're doing it in three, four different steps just because. I wanted to show you what it's capable of without failing, but as the software improves and the software actually get updated, we should be able to do this in one prompt. Now we're going to let it work and we're going to be back 
to show you the final result. Now, just after about a minute and a half, we got all the descriptions here. We lower these. And as you can see, these are the descriptions. We're going to go to the Google Sheet and we have the company overview for each one of the companies. From here, I could ask Runner Age to actually write a cold email that is specific for that company that will give me the best fighting chance to get a meeting with that company for me to provide them a proposal for my services. But we're not going to do that. We're going to shift gears. We're going to use my last two or three different automations that I got available in my account because I want to show you some other things that are possible with Runner Age. But as you can see, there are many things that you can do with it and you can take it to actually get all the information that you need. The more components, of course, the more time it would have taken me, but we were able to accomplish this relatively easily and relatively fast when you compare to doing it manually. Now let's shift gears and let me show you some other use cases that I have found for Runner H. My last use case is planning a family trip. I'm planning on going and visiting New York City for the first time in July. I wanted it to actually provide me with a detailed plan on where to go where to stay and everything else. This is my detailed plan. I actually put together a PDF for me and based on my budget and the time period that I'm going to travel, this is what it provided me. Now I could take this and actually do a whole bunch of other stuff like going and using the Sapir integration and using the MCP actually go and make reservations or actually go and start the booking process or a whole bunch of other stuff that is supported by Sapir through the Runner Age integration. Now, this is probably not much different than what ChatGPT will provide you. The magic of this will be on the following video in which you can connect this to Sapir and actually use their MCP to create other type of information that will help you or where you can use their automation and actually go and do some bookings so you can make sure that you have the hotels reserved and everything else. This is definitely a good starting point for runner age. There are some things that I wish that they would improve like multi-step and everything else. But as a starting point, this is definitely what you need to start looking at because this is the future of automation steer away from virtual assistants and we start employing AI for our automation needs and for our task management. With that being said, what would you use Runner Edge for? Please let me know down in the comments below. I'm really interested in knowing what your opinion is and what are your use cases. Thank you for watching my video. Thank you for sticking with me until the end. If you like this video, please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. Other than that, I hope to see you in the next video.